again, Alex at Cormdale Farm. So today I thought I would do a seedling tour, show you how everything is growing since I did my soil block video and then the seed trays in March. It's been about a month, maybe a little less on some of them. So you can see how much they've grown and what's worked, what hasn't, and what I learned. And then also I'm going to be pinching my snapdragons, but then rooting the cuttings to try to get even more snapdragons, which I've seen people do and have never tried. So I'm really excited to try it myself. So come along. All right, what am I looking for? What am I doing? What am I doing? Oh, I need one of these. I'm right here, buddy, I'm right here. What else do I need? I need to find my rooting hormone. Here you are. This is what I need. All right, let's get out of here. Here we have my grow light setup. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen some of my other videos, I will link in the description box to when I set up my grow light so you can see what the system is. And then also when I sewed my soil blocks and then when I did my trays and then also when I did my great Dahlia adventure, storage adventure. But let's start at the top. I'll show you what's going on. So this tray is all of my, pretty much all of my surviving storage dahlia. So a couple days ago, I went through all of the trays and I pitched the molded ones, the desiccated shriveled up ones, the ones that are just like not doing anything. Pitched them to save room and I put all the ones in here that are showing sprouts. And at last count, I think I had 16 survive storage, which honestly is a win in my book. It's more than I really thought was gonna happen. Here I have my Cosmos. I've got a seashells mix and a double click. I sewed these on April 13th and I'm recording this on Tuesday. So that much growth in only a couple days, which is awesome. And pretty much 100% germination on this um, level of the grow lights. These are my zinnias. I have Benares Giant and Oklahoma Carmine. I felt like I had to grow the Oklahoma series of zinnias since I live in Oklahoma. So there's those. And then here I have three different varieties. I have Queen Blush, Zinderella, and Lilliput. All sewed on April 13th. And these are from uh, Baker Creek, Johnny's, and just like your grocery store seed pack. And I've at pretty much 100% germination. So I'm really happy about this level. Next level is my soil blocks. Almost all of which I sewed in my soil blocking video. So here I have, I fertilized all of them today and watered them, so that's why they look a little like soggy brownies. But in this tray, I have pink calendula, rutabecchia, and more calendula. Calendula was pretty spotty. This block did a bit better than this block. As you can see, I only have about four of 20. Um, they're clearly wanting to go outside, but I'm not quite ready for them. Rutabecchia did okay. These guys are super slow growers, but I would say one, I, maybe 14 of 20. So not fantastic, but definitely not a fail. This one, my Potomac Snapdragons is like my win of wins. Look at this. Look at that. That's just a month in soil blocks. And some of my friends who sewed around the same time or way earlier in trays, their snaps look way smaller. So definitely for snapdragons, soil blocking seems to be the way to go. When I'm done here with the tour, I'm gonna work on rooting some cuttings from these and show you. Next is baby's breath. Pretty much a total fail. I'm seeing a lot of talk about other people having a hard time germinating baby's breath, but it looks like I have 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Not horrible. This is my coxcomb celosia. This is the one that looks kind of like that brain coral. Did pretty well. I did not do a great job of consistent watering in this tray, so sad death. My fault. But this one, pretty good. All right, I sewed this a couple days ago, so there's not much action, but these are more marigolds. And then I have caramel phlox and a different kind of calendula here, and I'm just not seeing any action yet. Keep an eye on it. Hopefully, really want that caramel phlox. Here I have milkweed for the butterflies, lavender phlox, and sugar star phlox. The lavender phlox germinated a lot better than the sugar stars, but that's okay. I have more seed left and I can try direct sowing once I've got the garden done. My marigolds, my champs, outgrowing their soil blocks rapidly. And here is, let's look what this is. Oh, straw flower. I've never grown straw flower before and I got really good germination on these. So I'm super excited about them. And last but not least, my yarrow. Also really, really high germination on the yarrow and they seem really happy. Need to go out and drain the excess water. This, my husband got on Amazon and it's been really helpful to check what steady temperature this area is and ignore this, this doesn't count, and the, the humidity. And I think that's why I'm seeing a lot of success here in my living room, my setup. All right, next level. All right, these are the trays I did for, on my uh, tray day, tray day. We got flamingo celosia and my purple celosia. Almost 100% germination. These guys are a little slow growing. I think they need to fertilize, but they're alive. Things are going. My not so great tray, my dill. The dill has been incredibly tender and very dramatic to wilt and die. So not too much dill. I'm gonna try direct sowing as well. I also have in the back here, asters of collected seed that were given to me. I didn't expect very great germination and I was right. I've got like three, four. So then I ended up popping in some gomfrina and more yarrow just to fill some empty, empty gaps. This, oh, this smells so good. I wish you could smell it. This is my cinnamon basil. Pretty much all of them came up. And in the back is my uh, Euphorbia Mountain Snow. Only a couple, but it's gonna be a great filler for bouquets. And then the last tray, oh, these guys are looking like drama boys, is Gomfrina. Really, really awesome germination on my Gomfrina. This is a mixed pack. I'm super excited about that. And then the last level, these are some random dahlias I found that I'm putting through the pre-sprout process to see if anything in them is viable and if they're gonna decide to grow. I'm hopeful about one or two, but we'll see. Then this wonderful tray. These are dahlias that I bought from, lo um, not local, but American growers, so they're not imported. And I'm just letting them pre-sprout and grow inside because I'm not quite ready to plant them out. But if I pre-sprout them, it's like I've already planted them because they're starting to grow. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. Got some really great varieties. And in the back, I have my nasturtium, two different varieties, super happy. They need to go out soon. And then I've got some hollyhock seeds collected from New Mexico before we left. And then more more pre-sprouting dahlias that I bought, which are correctly stored tubers, unlike my tubers. And then I've got a tray outside I'll show you when we do the Snapdragon cutting. So let's take these guys and make more Snapdragons. 
Okay, out here is the last tray and they are starting the hardening off process, which means they need to get used to living outside, outside of the cozy, perfect living room environment and into the more harsh Oklahoma life. So I've got them in the shade, they're getting used to the breeze and I'm gonna go give them a little bit of sun. But I've got hyacinth bean, I've got morning glory, and I've got here Spanish Eyes Black Eyed Susan Vine. So these are all my vines going gangbusters. They need to go outside, stat. Okay, I've brought you in a little closer here to look at my Snapdragons, and I wanna show you what I'm going to do. So these guys could go outside right now. I could harden them off, I could separate the little brownie bites, and I could plant them out in the field. But snapdragons appreciate pinching, which means you're gonna cut them, and then they're gonna branch and create more new branches, which means just more flowers. But since they're a branching flower, you can actually root these cuttings and get more plants, which is a great way to multiply flowers that especially take a, a little bit longer to grow um, like snapdragons. So I, let's find a good example. What about you, friend? Yes, so this guy. I'm gonna come in with my snips and I'm gonna find the first set of leaves, which are right here, and I'm going to snip off right at the base and what's going to happen is I'm going to see in a couple days new little branches coming out from these leaf joints and that just means more flowers now I'll show you what I'm going to do with this cutting here it's crazy simple I've got my rooting powder my rooting hormone if I can focus here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little cutting I'm gonna dip it in the powder. And I'm literally just going to stick it in to my dan, not break it. <laughs> Seed tray, see? That's it. Water it in, put it under lights, and I should have as many new snapdragons as cuttings that I take. So here we go, let's do the rest. Don't blow away. Some people don't want to take the time to do this, especially if you're starting a gazillion snapdragons, and I get it, but didn't start a gazillion dra snapdragons, so I want more snapdragons. Hopefully this works. All right, I did it. So we have, let's see. One, let's see, six, 30, 31, 32, 33. So I rooted 33 in, which means in theory, I could get, get on, 33 more Snapdragons just from taking cuttings. But we'll see, I kind of snapped a couple of these. So I'll give an update in a couple weeks and see if I start seeing roots, but these guys are gonna get watered in and then they're gonna go under the grow lights, see what happens. All right, so that's it. So I hope you enjoyed the seedling tour. I'm really happy with things. I'd never really started seeds like this in mass inside before. And considering I have almost 50% or more germination on everything, all the new flower varieties to me, I'm really pleased. And I'm excited to get them out here in the next couple weeks. I think they'll be ready, ready to be hardened off. And get them in the raised garden, which is being built right now. Yeah, and I'm excited to see if the Snapdragon seedling thing work. If they root and I get 33, is that what I said? 33 more seed, uh, Snapdragons, that would be awesome to go from 60 to 33 more. Almost 100 Snapdragons in my first year would just be awesome. Oh, that seemed unsafe, that was a stick.
Yep, that hit me. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! See you in the next video.